What is up guys, Austin Rucho here. So we just got back from seeing the Wonder Woman movie. Um, so we're just going to do a review and of course as always we'll do spoilers, um, or spoiler free the first half and then spoilers in the second. And then of course I'll let you know when we um, switch over that. So of course starting off spoiler free. Um, I would say pretty much overall the movie was pretty uh, dang good, especially for the DC movies and everything. Um, they did a really good job of this one compared to like the past couple, like uh, the Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, stuff like that. This one was a lot better um, storyline-wise, um, and I like it seemed like everything made sense and like went along and all that sort of stuff. Um, so overall, it was a really good movie. So if you were thinking about seeing or wondering or anything like that, Hunt Wonder Woman, um, I would say definitely give it a try because it definitely helps the whole um, DC, whatever they're calling the extended universe movie set, whatever. Um, it definitely helps out a lot for that because it's um, definitely a better sign and direction for the um, set of movies and stuff compared to the others. What was your opinion, bro? I liked it a lot. It was probably the best out of the DCU, and I think it helped that Zack Snyder didn't direct this. He wrote it, but I think there was another director who yeah, I think there directed was, this one. I think it was. I don't remember exactly who it was or if there was a big name or anything like that. Um, but yeah, the definitely the story was a lot better. So it started, you know, I'm not going to give this pose away. I'll just start with the thing, though. But it started with Wonder Woman as a a girl she grew up on the island of the Amazons and stuff and then from there it progresses on with a story that makes sense why every why it goes from one part to the other but of course this is a you know a fantasy and all this sort of stuff so obviously there's crazy stuff that goes on that's not real or doesn't really make sense but it does in the storyline um, and so like I said, everything makes sense, and then your villain in the movie actually makes sense, where in Batman vs. Superman, it seemed like they just kind of threw uh, Doomsday out in there and stuff. And I will say, I guess you could say it's a spoiler, but it's not, I'm not going to say anything more beyond this, but the villain is Ares, which if you've seen anything about the stuff, Ares is a popular, or not really popular, but like a big part of, like I would say, Wonder Woman, sorry, not... A story it's not Wonder sure. Woman's main villain. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. And if you saw um, on our channel here, we did a, like an unboxing review of the Wonder Woman DC figures, and then Ares was the build a figure in that. And I mentioned that I s assume he's going to be in the movie and stuff, and he was. He looked different than that figure did, uh, but it still was somewhat similar and everything. Um, but so he has a point, or is like the thread of the movie of why Wonder Woman is doing what she's doing. Where, like I said, with Doomsday, he just was kind of created. And he's like one of the big, super all-powerful villains. And then they just kind of threw him into the first movie. And, you know, he died at, or whatever, supposedly died or whatever at the end. Um, so that's kind of like, he, you know, he's one of the big baddies. He should have been kept for later on, either for after Dark Side, which they're, I assume, leading up to, obviously, with the stuff going on. Or right before that. So, um... That's why they shouldn't wear Ares is like kind of a villain specific to Wonder Woman. So it makes sense for it to be involved with just her. And then it could be something, you know, that she faces in a movie and stuff all by herself as like a beginning story type thing and stuff like that. Um, so acting, I mean, as usual, all, everyone at least I could think of did a really good job. Um, some of the like fighting and... Uh, the uh, animation for the fighting and stuff like that was kind of weird to me. I mean, it's very similar to the Batman versus Superman. Like, there's some ridiculous stuff that goes on in, like, super fast movement that doesn't seem right. Um, and the characters at those points seem very, very much uh, CG and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, I don't know if it's um, what the whole, like, director type thing does or whatever, but it does the whole, once again, where stuff just slows down, like, goes in slow motion and stuff takes place and that was kind of annoying to me at some points and stuff but it, overall the fights were still really enjoyable and uh, pretty awesome and everything and they did start small and like grew larger and um, as it should and everything um, trying to think what else as I said story was good acting the scenes were pretty like good because you, of course you start out on the Amazon island and it's all bright, sunny, it's like a beach setting, or a beach, a cliffside setting type thing and stuff with um, 
the like white walls of the cliffs and everything stuff like that and the green and then of course like I said the sun the crystal blue ocean and all that sort of stuff then you go into uh, London where it's um, like World War One eras and so you have of course all the in industry and all that sort of stuff so everything's like really dark gray and blues and stuff like that um, and then of course you get in the battlefronts and so it's all dark and dingy and dirty and uh, that sort of stuff like that so kind of like the um, switch of like scenery and like settings and stuff like that was a really nice transition over time and everything um, but did you have anything else you wanted to add it's like no I'm good so I can't really think of anything else to say so now we'll get into the spoilers so this is your spoiler warning okay so um, let's see what can we talk about spoilers I guess um, one thing to start with be maybe Aries I guess so we um, so Aries is like I said the biggest uh, th thread through this movie so uh, Wonder Woman or Diana whatever leaves Themyscira to go after Ares because she learns that she's uh, like someone that could actually stop Ares or yeah Ares I think of saying the wrong person um, but she's one that can go after Ares and that he's the doing stuff to uh, hurt people I don't know how to describe it and the war invoke the war yeah because after um, Steve Trevor crashes um, by their island stuff like that he tells them that there's this war going on and of course some Germans follow his ship in, and so um, they fight the Amazons and stuff like that. So Wonder Woman, against her mother's order, uh, just leaves with Steve Trevor to go to the war, and you know he's gonna says he'll take her there and all that stuff. And then they go to London and everything. Um, and so again, the whole time she's just wanting to get to Ares. So everything she wants to do is try and find Ares. So of course they go from London find out where he possibly could be so they start to travel there and uh so that's when you get in the um battle scenes or whatever of the the front of the war in the trenches and that sort of stuff and then uh, she sees you know all the people suffering and kids and women and all that sort of stuff and it really angers her so she decides just to um charge forward across the lines because if you know anything about um like the trench warfare and everything it was pretty much just stops like when they built the trenches that's pretty much where it stopped some people would move you know within a couple feet of that but that was pretty much all you could do because there was no man's land in between so she just gets up out of the trenches and runs across the course with her um her gauntlets and her shield and everything she's able to keep you know deflect bullets and all that stuff and is able to open up for the um well, I assume our Americans could be British whatever the I assume would be allies I'm not sure what they were called in the first world war uh, but they were able to like move up and be able to take over the German lines and stuff and then of course doing that led further on into a town and stuff and then they were able to make it to where um, the guy they're searching after which was the I think his name was Ludendorff or something like that um, who sh they th uh, thought was Ares and that sort of stuff so they um, were able to find that of course um, you have this guy which she thinks is Ares um, and he is with um, Dr. Maru, which is this like uh, weird like scientist, like color what? She's a chemist. Yeah, a chemist. What do you remember what they called her? Uh, sh no, I just I can't didn't. remember the name. They well, it doesn't matter. But they had a name. But of course, she's the girl. Which if you saw her Wonder Woman uh, Funko box, uh, I forget what's called uh, Legion of Collectors box. It had a we had got a pop of her, and she has like a part. I guess it's this side. A part like ceramic it almost seemed like yeah it sounded yeah, it like, like it when ceramic face and so she develops this chemical weapon that can like break through a uh, gas mask and it's a hydrogen based and so it can easily get through it and stuff like that too um so they are building these massive bombs to be able to drop of course on the front and wipe out thousands millions whatever of um, soldiers stuff to help get um pretty much win the war on the um german side and stuff and so, so I'm trying to remember everything goes on, but I don't remember for sure. So they get to this party thing that they're going to, and of course she can meets the guy for the first time and like confronts and stuff, and they just kind of talk. I can't remember exactly what goes on, but then uh, right after that, he ends up shooting off um, one of the bombs into the town they were like kind of like stationed in the night before and stuff like that, and so. Uh, 
she goes riding back off to check on the people. And of course, they're all dead now because of the gas, and so that just infuriates her. So they go to um, their main like army base where the, all the um, bombs are being kept and stuff and are going to be launched from and all that. And so she ends up getting into a watchtower where he's at and ends up uh, confronting him and attacking. Kills him relatively easy because he, he does take like this weird powder. Like he has these capsules that he breaks and like sniffs it in. And so it gave him strength to be able to fight against her for a little bit. But then she ended up killing him. And her sword is supposed to be like by stories told to her as a kid that that was like a god killer so she since Ares is a god she you know thought she could kill him but uh turns out it he wasn't Ares at all so I don't know exactly what he was supposed to be and then you find out that it was a politician they met earlier in London which um I forget what the guy's name is but he was um if it, you guys know Harry Potter or anything he was Professor Lupin in that and he, so he's been in other sorts of uh shows and movies and everything like that so I forget exactly what his name is um, and so it turns out he's actually Ares and he's uh, appeared in the wa a watchtower with her and stuff like that and so um, they start to like fight and everything and the whole time this is going on Steve Trevor and their uh, group of whatever I'd say mercenaries I don't know what you'd call them just this the little Steve Trevor version of the Howling Commandos yeah yeah, it this obviously with the war going on instead of World War Two being World War One, it did have a lot of Captain America, um, the first Avenger feelings going on, like pretty similar because what I'm getting ready to say is so obviously they um, the, his little group are going in trying to uh, get like stop the whole bombs like stuff, um, and they're being loaded onto this giant plane. Which isn't as nearly as advanced as um, Le Red Skull's version in Captain America, but it's still a over like ginormous plane for that time, and it's being loaded with all these bombs. So just like how um, in the uh, Captain America movie, it had the like whatever their weird bomb things were and stuff, and again flying this one was flying towards London, where I think in Captain America was flying towards New York. Uh, so still, it's got very similar stuff. So they obviously are able to like get in and you know take out a bunch of guys and uh, Steve figures out that the only way to stop the plane is by him taking it down so again a lot like Captain America but where he's Captain America instead so um, the plane starts to take off so he jumps onto it you know takes all the people on board out and is flying it up to into the air and then blows the plane up <clears throat> so that way it spares all the people that it would um, that it could take out and stuff like that and that way it destroys all the bombs and everything's done so he sacrifices himself and then during that whole time it's got a uh, wonder woman fighting Ares, and so the guy actually turns into Ares at this point so he gets um <clears throat> metal like attached to his body and stuff like that as armor and he has like this awesome like helmet thing that he takes his fingers and puts lines down through to see out of and stuff <clears throat> and has horns and everything so it was uh, really awesome, like the outfit, or like the design and stuff of him. And then of course they fight, and she ends up winning, as you know, because obviously if you're watching this, you should have seen the movie. Um, and then one of them saves the day, saves the day, and they all live happy. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Obviously Steve Trevor's gone, so she was super sad about that. But all the others survived, and so they're back in London. And then actually, after Steve's, Steve's death, Ares tried to use that to turn Wonder Woman. And it like, Ares pulled Dr. Maru over to yeah. get Wonder Woman to kill her. But Wonder Woman remembered the stuff that Steve had said to her yeah. about how love can conquer the yeah. hatred and stuff. And and so she becomes like super powerful, like almighty God, um, Wonder Woman. Which we do with the story, find, um, told that she's the, actually the daughter of Zeus. Just like Ares is the son of Zeus. Um, and that that's how... She, her mother keeps telling her that when she what obviously since there's no men on uh, Themyscira, that she was that her mom made her out of clay and then wished her to be real and uh, she became real. Um, where then at this point you find out that it was actually Zeus's daughter that she dro that he dropped off onto Themyscira for the Amazons to raise to be able to be a weapon to fight against Ares and stuff. Um, but yeah, and so they survive, obviously. Then it goes back to current times and stuff where she's 
thingy back on the time because Bruce Wayne sent her a picture, the original picture that you saw in the first movie. Um, of course, like just the picture with um, the whole group with her, Steve Trevor, and then the three other guys um, that were part of their small group and stuff. So she's, it goes back to her at looking at that picture and then that is the end of the movie. So once again, very, I liked it a lot leading up with her. Like I said, she had a reason to leave that. Not just like, oh, well, I found this strange guy. I'm going to go leave with him. She left to go after Ares. And that was the whole her whole motive throughout the movie was to go after Ares. Where with Batman versus Superman, I mean, obviously we had Batman fighting Superman. But you were kind of like, what's the whole motive besides Superman, you know, had destroyed Met or Metropolis or whatever and stuff like that. And Batman was there to witness it and see all the destruction he did and all that sort of stuff. It was just, like I was like I said, Batman vs. Superman was really confusing storyline-wise. Where th um, Wonder Woman had a very, like to me, detailed, straight narrative throughout the whole story. And a much better villain that was more reasonable to be in this point of the movies and stuff like that. Was there anything else you needed to add, bro? Uh... I want to say, don't sit through all the credits. Yeah, There's no after that's the credit scene. scene. Don't sit for the credits because, as I mentioned, um, we can't really remember if we did or not. But I think we skipped some other, like other DC movies, and then end up there being credits at the end of the movie. And so this time we're like, oh, we better stay through. And then this time there's absolutely nothing from the point that. Uh, movie ends there's nothing beyond that so there's no like mid credits or in credits and stuff like that so don't sit through the movie and then anything else uh i'm not sure if this is actually the symbol or not but wonder woman's tiara yeah. that she has so yeah has we got a, this paper tiara thing from uh, something so it so has a star, star shape yeah and it almost resembles the star sapphire which is a offshoot of a Green Lantern core. Yeah, so it's one of the Lantern cores. Yeah, and it's the symbol or er, of love, yeah. pretty much. And Wonder Woman uh, in the comics becomes yeah, one becomes a, for which a time. It, which he said that and I was like, yeah, I, I you know I've heard about that and stuff. But then it kind of really made a lot of sense with the whole story in the movie, with you know the whole Steve Trevor thing that love, you know can fix everything and you know loves the best thing overall so it like fit really well with her this being you know the lantern symbol of love and everything and so you never know later on they could lead to the lantern cores and then you know the basis is there for her reason for why she would be one of the um whatever pink lanterns i don't know exactly what you call them which would actually be really interesting if that's what they build to in the dcu yeah because i mean i could clearly see like how Marvel's doing their whole um, Infinity War thing, so bringing all these groups together, where the gr whole Green Lantern Corps thing, you take all pretty much all the main, I mean, there's probably more, but as far as I know, the main heroes, and you stick them into different Lantern groups. Well, not really. And so, cause... I mean, you'd be the same thing, but instead of having, you know, the Justice League, and then this group, and then this group, and this and stuff, it'd just be putting all those people into their own group, uh, sort of by color and what they stand for, and then all those groups fighting against something larger. Because each Lantern Corps has a collar and an emotion attached to them. And it'd be interesting if they led up to that point, maybe not made that the tip-top, but when they get to the battle with Darkseid, kill off all the members, and then bring them back using the Black Lantern Corps, and then Barry Allen being the White Lantern like he is and bringing everybody back to life and then, then splitting into their individual lanterns. Yeah. Because Lex Luthor... So for the movie, though, that's probably way too much to ask for because especially with the way Batman vs. Superman was, um, we'll have to see how the Justice League movie goes before we think larger scale. Because, I don't know because I'm thinking... <laughs> I mean, it'd definitely be cool if they, they did this sort of stuff. playing this out for a long yeah. time, kind of like Marvel <coughs> has, and Marvel's kind of getting to that point yeah. where they're going to do a runoff like that. So, it'd be interesting. So, so yeah. So, if obviously, like I said, if you're watching this, I would hope that you saw the movie already, being as this is supposed, but I know some people don't because I've had comments about that before. So if you haven't seen it, definitely see it at some point, obviously. Don't, because of the past DC movies, don't just give up on it. This is definitely a bright spot 
for the future of what's going on. So hopefully Justice League will help carry the momentum and stuff and just keep it going. Um, but that's all that I can think of. Do you have anything else? Definitely go see the movie. Yeah, definitely worth seeing, like we say. It's it's a bright spot with uh, Zack Snyder not directing <laughs> a film. Yeah. Um, but with all that, um, enjoy the movie. Uh, but if you have anything um, to say, please leave any comments you have down below. So if you have seen it and thought anything different or agreed, let us know down below. But if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up and hit that red subscribe button to see more. And we'll see you next time.